This is the Royal Astronomical Society, where they have been studying space since 1820. Currently, they have 3,500 members who continue to research different planets and stars within the known universe. As part of this documentary, we spoke to experts and members of the public. We asked them, what planet would you go to and why? I'd go to Mars because uh, my favourite book is The Martian and I really want to see if Mark Wantley's potatoes are still there. To Mars it would be quite um, inhospitable because Mars doesn't have a very thick atmosphere and it doesn't have much of a magnetic field. So all the particles that are coming from the sun hit the surface. So there's a huge amount of radiation. But it would be quite interesting if you come and have a look at the sky, because in the daytime the sky's red. So it's like um, the opposite to the Earth, because in the daytime the sky is blue, and at sunset the sky goes red. Hey, welcome to Mars! Hey, hey, welcome to Mars! Oh, I wanted to go to Mars! Oh. I'd like to go to the moon, um, just to see what it's all about, basically, and experience the things that are supposed to happen there. It would be quite fun, you'd be able to jump, I think it's 18 feet, and you'd, well, as astronauts have done before, you'd get some great games of golf, although I think when they hit the ball, it went round into orbit around the moon, or suborbital, so finding your ball would be very hard. It depends on the side you go. On well, one side, you're going to be in constant sunlight, the other side's going to be complete dark. I'm the You can't land on it, it's a ball of gas. If you had a pin, the temperature of the sun, it would kill you at about 200 kilometers. Oh no, I seem to be burning. Oh no. Ah. I would like to go outside of this universe to try to prove if, if there are multiple universes. So there isn't really an edge of the universe. Um, current theories suggest that as it expands, it creates itself. And so even if you got near the edge, by then it would have got even bigger, so you wouldn't be near the edge. So there is no edge. Ah, uh, the edge of the universe. There's nothing there. We're from the multiverse. Um, I would go to a galaxy and I would um, just like float around between all the different coloured um, bits of space dust and um, stars and just like enjoy how beautiful it is. Well, you wouldn't last very long because it's, um, you wouldn't be able to hear a thing for a start because there's no air and your body would boil from the insides. But as far as we know, the human skin is actually strong enough to contain it. So you wouldn't technically explode, you just all, all your features would boil and you'd have massive, massive outgassing. So your eyes would hurt, your lungs would uh, shrink entirely. I don't imagine that's a fun holiday. Wow, I'm really floating on a rock. I can't believe I'm in outer space. Wowee. Maybe Venus? I don't know, because he's unusual. Venus has been described, most famously by Carl Sagan, as the hell planet. Its atmosphere is 92 times the atmosphere of the Earth in, in density. So there's only been one probe that successfully reached the surface of it, and it lasted about half an hour before actually getting crushed by the air. Hello, I'm Venus. I will kill you. If I could go anywhere in space, I'd like to go to one of the moons, which is a really tiny moon called Enceladus. But it's really interesting because it's covered in ice, and we think it's got a water ocean underneath the ice, and um, other, uh, other chemical elements in the water that indicate that maybe it could be the sort of place that life could live. So not life like us, but like tiny microbial life. And it would be really interesting to go to Enceladus and see if that's true. And also the view of Saturn from Enceladus would be pretty cool. I'd go to Titan because I think it's actually realistic. It's um, the second largest moon in the solar system, it's the moon of Saturn. On its surface, there is, there is an atmosphere, the only moon with an atmosphere. It's got its own magnetosphere, so you could probably actually stay there for a bit. It's got uh, lakes of methane and various hydrocarbons, which would be incredible. You could actually probably get a boat and sail on it. 
the, the sand they have is more like polystyrene and it gets electrically charged so their sand is really sticky so you get these amazingly huge sand dunes which can't be torn apart by wind and don't move like they're perpendicular to the direction of the wind and everyone was perplexed by this for years and had no idea.